Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 16th April 2024. So without wasting any time, let's get started with our discussion. So we are going to take PDF of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And after picking out of articles, I will explain you like in how many dimensions you can think about that topic. So you have to do some research after that because if I want to explain each and everything it will be like a GS class it will be not like a current affairs analysis and it will take like more than three hours of time but what are the time which is given to me is like 35 to 50 minutes of time so within this time I will try to complete as much as possible okay yes now let us see the front page of Hindu and here the first article is very important so this article it is about our monsoon rainfall so even we are continuing the series of previous questions analysis right so in that analysis of previous questions i am telling you like which are the important repeated themes in your geography so one such a theme here is monsoon so monsoon is which is comes under your climate topic and number of times a question asked from that monsoon directly okay so this is one of the important article from your prelims point of view and even from mains also many a times a question asked from this area so now let us see the title of article india to get above normal monsoon rainfall this uh, uh, this year that is imd said so recently we also discussed one article that one private agency that is skymet also said that we are going to have normal rainfall yes yes now let us see the dimensions of this article and i will give you like ideas how can you think about this topic in multi-dimensional manner so that multi-dimensional approach is very important for your examination point of view so before seeing the dimensions i want to make a small announcement we in Rathod's IES, we are going to start our new offline batch from 27th May. That is from the next month. So we are going to start our first offline new batch in Hyderabad. And here we are taking a challenge. So this challenge till now, any institute in our India took this challenge. So this is for the first time in the history of India. So we came with this challenge that is 50% refund policy with a written agreement. If you're not even clearing, if you're not even clearing your prelims after coaching, we are going to return your 50% of money that you paid for GS. So first of all, I will tell you charges of this course. So we are providing two types of courses. So first one is your foundation course which includes both your prelims and mains. So this is from your GS. And second one is GS foundation with optional. And here in our academy, we are providing two optionals. One is anthropology and anthropology is dealt by me. And next one is sociology, sociology and anthropology. And the charges for only GS foundation is 1,20,000 rupees and for both GS and optional is 1,50,000 rupees. And here in this 50% refund, either if you are joining only for GS foundation or GS foundation plus optional, we are going to return 60,000 rupees if you are not clearing even prelims. So why you are that much confident? So this question may arise in your minds, right? Because I have experience of more than five years in analyzing Hindu newspaper. So with my experience, I am good at ex uh, like expecting the topics in your prelims and mains. And from last four years, we are giving like topics for the students. So here, yeah, most of the topics they got in examination. And with my experience, I can say like around 30 questions we can expect in your prelims from your current affairs. If you are thorough in like at least two years of current affairs and if you are thorough in this contemporary current affairs or current issues you are going on. So from that contemporary issues, you can expect the questions. 
Yes, we can expect like 30 questions around from year prelims. And there are some repeated themes. For example, in polity, repeated themes, history, geography, like that. So, if you focus on that, then you can easily clear this prelims for sure. And not only this expecting of questions, but even there are many special features of this course. So, there will be 100% syllabus coverage in all subjects. So, we are going to cover each and every subject with 100% syllabus. And next one is, we are going to cover more than 10,000 previous questions of UPSC examination. So, UPSC board is not conducting examination only for civil services, but even for defense, NDA, CAPF, also it is conducting examination. And there the prelims questions are like same quality, same standard. We are going to see like those questions also, which are relevant from our UPSC point of view, UPSC CSC point of view. And this one is, we are going to cover even PYQs of your mains of last 12 years and exclusively students of uh, facing problem with CSAT. So, we are also focusing on CSAT. So, if you are not focusing on CSAT and if you are focusing on GS, yes, you will be out of the game. So, here we are also having the proper focus on CSAT and also mains answering practice on the day one of your foundation course and even especially exclusively we will be having interactive classes for essay and case studies and every day we will be having five hours of your gs classes apart from this you have to stay institute okay for next five hours that is for your study hours so for study hours also we are providing the study space with mentor support and with faculty support you will be having a faculty so that if you have any doubts then you can resolve your doubts in the study hours so that is nowhere provided in india and we are conducting regular prelims test and mains test that will be on daily basis and as well as after completion of the certain modules you will be having the selective module test and this one is in the study hours we have a plan like so this five hours will be divided into three parts so one part is for revision of that day's class and next one it is for practicing of prelims questions and mains question and next one is for covering of ncrt's so here we are going to cover ncrt's in this study hours and exclusively there will be separate classes for your contemporary issues of last two years from prelims and mains point of view and we were going to also provide the daily class handouts for your revision and next one is we are going to have evaluation of your answers so whatever the answers you are writing we will be having like evaluation of your answers and based on that you will be having one-to-one -one mentorship with the faculty and also you will be having one-to-one -one mentor with the toppers as well and even exclusively we are focusing on current fights so we are going to provide you like daily current fights weekly current fights and even weekly and monthly compilations as well and we are also going to provide you the value added study material for your preparation and one important thing here is there are very limited seats only 70 seats per a batch okay so already admissions are going on and if you want to have this seat so you have to register so for registration so we are attaching the register form in the description box the link is given there so click that and try to register for your seat okay so even though if you are not uh, going to take exactly today or tomorrow so by the time like first week of june also it will be okay so by the first week of june also you can take admission there will be no problem okay that's it so these are the some important features of this course so with these features i have that much confidence that we are going to make you to clear your examination okay trust us believe us and you can take the seat okay so now let us see the first article so first article it is about monsoon forecast okay monsoon forecast so here now the forecast which is came up by IMD. So what is this meaning of monsoon? So monsoon is nothing but reversal of winds. Okay, it's nothing but reversal of winds. So why there is reversal of winds? So I will 
draw a schematic diagram so that you can understand here. So you know that India is present in northern hemisphere that means above equator. Right? So what is the Coriolis force at equator? Coriolis force at equator is equal to 0. And Coriolis force it is maximum at poles. So this is a one important concept that you have to know. And because of this Coriolis force there is deflection of winds. That means the direction of winds will be changed. In which direction? In northern hemisphere, they will be moving towards right. And in southern hemisphere, deflection is towards left. So this concept is important. So what happens here is during the summer season. Okay. So during summer season, ITC is an intertropical convergence zone which will be moving towards northward. So normally it will be around 23 and half degrees 22 and half degrees north we have this ITCZ. So wherever we have seen this ITCZ we will see like presence of low pressure area. So what happened according to pressure gradient force always winds move from high pressure to low pressure. Okay, so here we have low pressure because of this ITC which is present here and normally from equator we can see we have high pressure. Okay, so normally winds they will be moving in this direction, right. But what happened, so here we have high pressure and here we have low pressure. So winds have to move from high pressure towards low pressure. So after crossing the winds equator, so they will be moving rightwards, okay. So because of this, normally during summer season, what happens? So we can see more water vapor which is present and conduction, convection which happens and that led to the formation of clouds, right? So this winds, whenever they are moving from Arabian Sea or Bay of Bengal towards India, so these moist laden winds, they bring rainfall, okay? So this happens in the summer season. So what happens in the winter season is, what happens in the winter season is, this ITCZ will be moving towards southwards, okay, below the equator. Now here we can see low pressure will be formed and what happens winds, they will be moving in this direction, okay. So in summer season they are moving upwards and winter season they are coming downwards. So this is the meaning of reversal of winds. So this is the phenomena of monsoon and why this monsoon is important for India because as you all know if you see from economy point of view our Indian economy is called as agrarian economy. So agrarian economy means nothing but depend upon agriculture. So agriculture is a primary activity in India but if you see the problem of agriculture so there is no proper irrigation facilities. So most of the agriculture in India which is depend upon rainfall. So we are calling them as rain fed agriculture. Okay. So because of this rainfall is very important and rainfall estimate is also very important for the proper for policy making by government. And here you have to see one more important concept that is El Nino and La Nina. Okay. El Nino and La Nina. So actually for last four years we have La Nina and this year we have El Nino. So El Nino is like not normal. So during this El Nino we will be having dry spells and we will be having like very less rainfall. There will be like very less rainfall in this El Nino and we can see like droughts and also heat waves. So these are the problems now we are facing because of this El Nino. And even uh, recently private company, private agency called as SkyMet. Private agency called as SkyMet. And now IMD said that we are going to have above normal rainfall. That means we are going to have this La Nina this year. So here you have to see like what are the differences between El Nino and La Nina and there are some dimensions 
like you have to see first of all what is this El Nino and what is this La Nina and what happens during this El Nino and La Nina okay so what is the impact so in this impact you have to see like what is a positive impact and what is the negative impact and even you can add new dimension is what is the impact of climate change on monsoon because this is contemporary topic okay so that's it so these are the very important areas that you have to see and this topic is important from your geography and as well as economy and even environment and ecology because we are adding climate change here okay so now let us see this topic in detail so if you see the context it says that while several states they reel under heat waves so because of el nino this year there is no proper rainfall there is very less rainfall and we are facing rainfall deficit and even on another side there is increasing of climate change so because of this there is crouching heat there is heat waves are seen in different areas and now imd had forecasted that we are going to have good monsoon this year and if you see the details it says that last year el nino like a warming of central pacific and usually linked to the diminished rainfall in india so because of this el nino what happens so in this pacific ocean so we have to see like eastern pacific and western pacific so i will show you the diagram so that you can easily understand what is this concept of el nino and la nina so that will be done within like few minutes of time okay so please wait for few minutes so that i will be showing you like what is this phenomena actually and here there is decrease in rainfall in india because of warming in this year due to this el nino and that led to decreasing of rainfall by 6 percentage and recently imd which is using like multiple approaches to forecast the monsoon so it is using statistical methods and even we are using some new parameters like ocean temperatures and snow cover in europe and how the performance of this monsoon is happening so based on this ocean temperature and this snow cover now they are estimating this performance of monsoon and the other way they are also using like a dynamic approach or like they are uh, simulating the weather across the globe on a particular day and they are using some powerful supercomputers okay and they are estimating this monsoons so in this way here they are using like two methods to estimate the monsoons and if you see some facts regarding this imd there is a high chance of getting like uh, questions regarding factual based information of imd okay so you have to be take care of this as well so imd when it was established in year 1875 that means even before we got independence the establishment of imd was done and it is national meteorological service of the country and and it is also the principal government agency in all matters it is related to uh, like meteorology and as well as sub and allied subject that means the subjects to related to that and this uh, imd which will be working as agency of ministry of earth sciences of government of india and this point will be very very important for your prelims and this headquarters in new delhi and imd it is also have the regional organizations or regional centers so how many there are six regional centers are there and if you are talking about what are the roles and responsibilities so if you are getting a mains question regarding imd you can expect from this area like mention the roles and responsibilities of imd so first one is it will be taking like meteorological observations and later on it will be providing current and forecast meteorological information and even that information is very important for activities like agriculture irrigation shipping aviation hop offshore oil explorations etc and even imd will be warning against severe weather phenomena for example like tropical cyclones nor'westers like on dust storms heavy rain snowfall cold heavy waves or heat waves etc so in all these areas which are going to cause destruction to property which is going to cause destruction to life so in these areas here it is going to give the warnings and this one is imd will also provide meteorological statistics which are very much required for agriculture water resource management and for industries and for oil exploration 
etc. So in these areas also it is going to give the data. And next one is it is going to conduct and promote research in meteorology and also some allied disciplines. So in these areas, so there are the roles and responsibilities of IMD. And now I will show you this image. So this image which shows about what is the difference between El Nino and La Nina. So this is El Nino year and this is normal year it is called as La Nina. So what happens in the La Nina here is, so here we have India. So over India we have low pressure and this is Pacific Ocean. So this is West Pacific Ocean and this is East Pacific Ocean, right? So this East part we have high pressure and the West part we have low pressure. So here low pressure and here low pressure. So we have strong low pressure area which is created towards the western part of Pacific Ocean. So according to this pressure gradient force, always the winds they have to move from high pressure to low pressure. So winds are moving from east Pacific Ocean towards west Pacific Ocean and that will cause good rainfall in India. So that will cause good rainfall in India. But what happens in this Lanina is opposite. So in this western part we have high pressure and in the eastern part we have low pressure. So winds start moving in other direction and here normally we have low pressure. So low pressure here, low pressure here, high pressure here. So we are attracting very less winds. Okay. So that easterly winds are going to weaken and warmer water they will be moving eastwards. So there is less rainfall okay which is caused by this monsoons so this is the first topic and now let us move on to next topic it is about goods exports hit dollar 41.68 billion in march so in march yes in this mercantilized trade so we increased our exports so let me give you some dimensions where you have to focus so this article is talking about foreign trade. So it is talking about foreign trade. So in trade we will be discussing two topics. So one will be exports and second one will be imports. So one will be exports and second one will be exports. So exports means nothing but goods which are going out from a country in simple words. And import means the goods we are getting into country from other countries. So if you draw this diagram then you can easily understand what is exports and imports. So now this article is saying that there is increasing of exports. Okay, that means you are exporting more to other countries. So in this scenario you have to know data regarding Indian exports. Okay, data regarding Indian exports. And you have to see like what are the steps taken by the government to increase exports. For example, we have different policies. And next one is you have to see like in which sectors or in which fields there is increasing of exports. So when you are talking about trade, we will be coming across two words. First one is trade deficit. And second one is trade surplus. First one is trade deficit and second one is trade surplus. Trade deficit means whenever imports are more compared to that of exports. So whenever exports are more compared to that of imports, so this condition is called as trade surplus. So these are the some important dimensions. And apart from that, you have to see like whenever there is increasing of exports, so what is the significance? So what happens to the country? So this is very important. And overall, this article is important from your GS paper 3 under economy point of view. So from economy point of view, this article is very important. Okay. So now let us see the notes of that topic. So if you see the context, why it is in news? So India's exports hit 12 month high from last 12 months. So in the month of March, we can see there is high exports of Indian goods. Okay. So now if you see like India's major export arenas. So where in which sectors India is good in exports. So first one is engineering goods. 
So in engineering goods in this financial year 2022, there was around 50 percentage of growth in exports. And next one is from agriculture products. So agriculture exports, they were buoyed by the government's push to meet global demand for food. And next one is like textiles and apparels. So India's textiles and apparels are also like good. And actually government came up with this scheme called as Mitra Park, especially to increase exports in these textiles. And this one is, you know that India is very good in this pharmaceuticals and drugs. And even India is the third largest producer of medicines by volume. And even India is the biggest supplier of generic drugs. Okay. And in these areas, yes, India is doing good in exports. So what are the challenges? Yes, even though there is increasing of exports, so these export sectors, so they are facing challenges. So this part is very important from your mains. So I am discussing both like which area is important from prelims and which area is important from mains. So in this way, we are going to have integrated approach in our current efforts. Okay. So first important challenge is there is access to finance is one big challenge. So here if I want to increase my exports or if I want to improve my manufacturing or production, yes, I need some finance, but I'm not getting proper finance. It is one major problem. Okay. So many Indian exporters they face challenges in obtaining finance because of high interest rates. And if you want to go to banks and to get the loan, so they are asking this collateral requirements. And even there is lack of credit availability from financial institutions, etc. And this one is there is also very limited diversification. So India's export baskets is concentrated in a very few sectors like engineering goods, textiles, pharmaceuticals, etc. So because of this, if there are any vulnerabilities, so they will be like succumb into that. And this one is rising protectionism and deglobalization. So countries across the globe, they are moving towards protectionist state policies and even they are focusing on like a disrupted global political order like because of this Russia Ukraine issue and because of this weaponization of supply chain. So in this way here that is leading to the shrinking or decreasing of our export capabilities. And now let us see the next topic. So that is also in the front page. So it is talking about wholesale price inflation accelerates to three months high. So always we are seeing this topic of inflation and now I'm not going to give you the dimensions. So please do revise that inflation topic and it is very, very important from your prelims. And here you can see one interesting image of Shakti, Mumbai's Jew Royal Bengal Tiger. So actually what happening, the problem here is heat waves. So because of this heat waves, animals, they are like facing difficulty in surviving. Okay. So now let us see the article which is talking about wholesale price inflation. So context, why is the news? So India's wholesale price inflation has been quickened to three months ahead. There is increase of this wholesale price inflation of 0.53% in March. That is from 0.2 percentage in February with food index had been raised. Okay, because of increasing of several prices and even there is increasing of prices in paddy, potato, onions. So because of all these things now we are seeing like there is increasing of price of wholesale. That means wholesale price of goods. So here even fuel and power uh, as well our manufactured products they are continuing in the deflation mode. Deflation is nothing but opposite to inflation. But even though because of increasing of food prices, now we are seeing this wholesale price inflation. So what is this wholesale price index? So wholesale price index is nothing but it measures the changes in the prices of goods which are sold or trade in bulk. That means, for example, there is a manufacturer. So manufacturer will be selling the products in bulk. Okay. So like that, whenever any person who is buying the goods in bulk is called as wholesaler. And actually this wholesale price index which will be published by Office of Economic Advisor which comes under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Okay. And the major criticism of this index is general public does not buy products at wholesale price. 
so general people they will be purchasing this goods at retail price and what is the base year base year is 2011 to 2012 it is also very important so please uh, let me know like uh, do you know like what is the significance of this identification of index or not so please let me know in the comment box and i want to let you know like what are the factors to influence in this wpi index so first and foremost thing here is so we have high base effect so experts suggest that wpi inflation is expected to remain moderate due to high base effect so there is high base effect so here the base year is 2011 to 2012 and this one is easing of global commodity prices so the decline in the global commodity prices is anticipated to help keep inflation of manufacturing products at lower pace and this one is we are also having this food inflation and monsoon prospects so the price of wheat affected by the market conditions so there is a need that is to be monitored and additionally the monsoon's impact on inflation of kharif crop is a cause of concern so especially in this kharif crop also we are having the concern of increasing of price so it is also one important concern in this food inflation and now let us move on to next article so in city page there is nothing much important you can simply leave this and if you move on to this uh, states page here you can see one article that is dda that is delhi development authority flouts that means it had violated ngt guidelines continuous construction on crowded yamuna food plain so here you have to see this keyword that is yamuna so yamuna is one of the important river and it is tributary of river ganga right so you have to see where this river yamuna originates and which are the important tributaries of this river yamuna and what is the meaning of this flood plain so whenever there are increasing of construction across this flood plain so if there is rainfall or if there is increased level of water in this yamuna see yamuna river that will cause the floods so this is the thing that you have to see and you have to think about what are the steps that can be taken to minimize this disasters in the future and this editorial page so this article is about bjp manifesto we are not at all bothering and even it is talking about policies of nda government and upa government so we are not focusing on this but here i found one thing is they are discussing about different schemes so here we have like swachh bharat mission pradhan mantri awas yojana urban pradhan mantri awas yojana rural rural and next one is pradhan mantri ujwala yojana pradhan mantri or pm kisan samman nidhi aishman bharat okay so you have to see just these schemes so from this schemes also we can get questions here you have like a mid day meal scheme that is pradhan mantri poshan shakti nirman and pm poshan and pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana okay so those are some schemes that are set but you can just go through the schemes that's it you should not see like what is the political argument which is going on here and here you can see one more article it is about bjp and congress in karnataka we are not focusing on that so there is one article which is relevant that is data personal digital personal data protection act of 2023 and how how it is like not acting as a barrier for this journalist free speech so here we have to see what are the exceptions to journalist that's it so nothing more nothing less just we have to see the expect exceptions so now we are going to see that so author mainly says that in august 2023 india got its first comprehensive data protection law and the name here is digital personal data protection act of 2023 so after government of india came up with this act government is in process of framing rules and regulations and they have come they are going to come into picture after this general elections so the law which is largely based on users they are giving consent so whenever they are collecting uh, collecting information or data so they have to use the data only after getting the consent from that so and so person and even this uh, act which provides basic rights such as access to the and as less erasure that is removal of data 
and places uh, some obligations on companies and establishes a complaints body for grievance redressal mechanism and this law might have an invisible impact there is no impact on journalist free speech because of exceptions so if you see the exceptions here so this digital personal data protection act of 2023 so it is having some exceptions to generalist activities for example including like research archiving and statistical analysis for example if uh, if any tv channel or journalist who is writing an article about mp so he has to do some extensive research like what are the meetings he held so what are the projects he did and how many times he used it like public property and how many times he used it like chartered flights to go here and there so like that but they those information they are not present in the public domain sometimes they have to do like extensive research and before releasing the information they are not taking any concern from the mp so this is one cause of concern okay and even section 7 of this act which says that there are certain legitimate uses so this legitimate uses which covers exceptions and they will allow the processing without consent for research or government purposes so we're talking about exemptions here not only for journalists but even government data processing necessary for benefits service delivery and national security and each one is processing the government's entities in the interest of public order and state security so these are the two other exceptions and now let us move on to our Delhi page. So again we have opinion page and in this opinion page there is one article which is important. So it is about India's Arctic imperative. So here let us see the dimension. So this article is talking about India's interest in Arctic region. India's re interest in this Arctic region. Okay. So now let us draw globe so here this is 0 degrees 30 degrees north 60 degrees north and this is 90 degrees north okay so this is equator tropic of cancer okay and it is arctic circle so what is this arctic region so the region which is present between the 60 degrees north and the 60 degrees and the 90 degrees north Okay, 60 degrees north to 90 degrees north. This is called as Arctic region. Okay, one thing is clear, right? And you have to see this is Arctic circle, right? This is Arctic circle. So, you have to see like countries. Countries which are present on this Arctic circles. So, it is very, very important. And you have to see like why India's interest had been increased what is the interest of india in this arctic region and you have to see like what is the significance and you have to see like what are the recent developments so all these are very important okay so these are the areas that you have to focus and we are going to see this and even you have to see like what are the challenges and this topic is at most important from your mains and countries from this arctic circle you can get from your prelims and this topic is important from gs paper to under international relations point of view so now let us see this topic in detail so if you see this india's interest in arctic region so in march 2024 so india's first winter experience at arctic they came into successful end so because of this we are talking about india's interest in this arctic region so what changed india's policy the first one is arctic is rising rising like arctic uh, temperature is rising that means we can see like warming of arctic region is happening at a very faster pace and we are going to have like catastrophic climate occurrences in India. So there is a relationship between India's climate with this Arctic climate. So because of climate change, it is going to have impact on India. So this is one important reason. 
And next one is New Delhi is seized of opening up of Arctic Sea route. So because of melting of Arctic region or the warming, so we are having like new sea routes. So we are having this northern sea route. So that is going to be very much helpful for Indian trade through this region because it is going to reduce the cost of shipping and as well as time, fuel and as well as security cost, etc. And third important reason here is because of geopolitics. So Chinese are increasing their investments in this Arctic region. So because of this, it is one of the cause of concern for India. And Russia's decision to grant China expanded access to this northern sea route, which has deepened its anxiety. And India is increasingly focusing on like Arctic, it is also one important thing. So here, because of this Russia-Ukraine conflict also, there is exaggeration and suspension of various cooperative forums. So it is also one important reason. And if you're talking about what exactly are the interest of India, so this interest of India will be like a main question for your 10 marker or 15 marker. So first one is resource exploration. So Arctic region, it is believed to be have like abundant of resources. For example, reserves of oil, reserves of gas, reserves of minerals, rare earth metals, etc. So because of increasing of energy demand in India, is we have to search for the alternatives of fossil fuels. So we have one choice here. And next one is trade routes. So because of this melting of Arctic ice, so it has opened up new trade routes. So that it will be very much cost effective, okay, than the traditional routes. And next one is climate change. So the melting of this Arctic ice is a major cause of concern for India because India is also vulnerable to this climate change because of increasing of sea level rise and because of change in the monsoon patterns. And next one is scientific re reasons or research. So India is interested in conducting scientific research in this Arctic region so that we can better understand the impact of global climate and we can study flora and fauna in this region. And next one is diplomacy. So India is keen to play a more active role in global diplomacy and its interest in Arctic, Arctic region. Okay. So because of this, this sees in news. And now let us see next article. It is very important. It is about Operation Meghdoot. So actually it is like celebrating of 40 years of completion of this Operation Meghdoot. So there is a high chance of getting question regarding this Operation Meghdoot in your prelims. So what is this? Let us see the context. So as you all know that Siachen, Siachen is like the being the world's highest and coldest battlefield. And it sits a very strange location with Pakistan on left and China is on right. So China is here and Pakistan is here. Okay, so because of this, it's very, very important for strategic location of India. And in 1970s and 1980s, Pakistan, they began allowing foreign mountaineering expeditions. And even they started resorting this catagraphic aggression. And because of this Indian military, they became active by this intelligence inputs. And finally, they moved up and they prompt. Okay, they want to, uh, they try to get out them. So in January 2020 here, the Army General Manoj Mukund Narvane termed Siachen as a place where a collusive threat of Pakistan and China was maximum. Okay, so because of this, we need to be get ready. So if you're talking about this Operation Meghdoot, so it was a military operation. And when it was launched, it was launched by Indian Army and Indian Air Force in 1984. So the operation goal, it was to secure Siachen Glacier. So this Siachen Glacier, it is a strategically important region of Northern Ladakh. And if you're talking about what are the goals, there are three important goals of this operation. The first one was to gain control of entire Siachen Glacier. And second one is to, admis uh, to administer glacier as part of Ladakh. And next one is the gain the three main passes of this Sarpro Ridge. So these are the three important aims of this mission. And you were successful in that mission. Okay. So these are the important things that you have to know. And now let us move back to the paper. And here in this, uh, in this page, you can see one data point. It is talking about what share of global carbon dioxide emissions come from aviation. 
so this is very important actually aviation sector is also one such sector which is contributing like release of emissions correct so here flying is one of the most carbon intensive activities so it is contributing around 2.5 percentage of world's carbon emissions okay this is very very important thing and even there is increased demand and increasing of advancements in science and technologies that have driven the change in the aviation emissions over last 50 years and total carbon dioxide emissions you are often explained through kaya identity so you can get a question like recently kaya identity okay recently kaya identity is in use what it is related it is related to estimation of carbon dioxide emissions from these airlines or aviation sector okay so this is very important and in this text and context i discussed about this topic of operation meghdoot and here there is one more important topic okay so that is from your science and technology point of view that is how does hydrocarbons extraction happens okay hydrocarbons extraction there is nothing but you can take like oil and as well as natural gas so how they are explored so here you have to see this paragraph so this paragraph is very important that is where are these hydrocarbons located so especially they are present in the rock so which type of rocks so we have sedimentary rocks so in this sedimentary rocks we can see the presence of fossil fuels for example natural gas coal crude oil and petroleum they are found in underground reservoirs they are created when a most resistant rock type overlays a less resistant one and it is creating a lid that causes hydrocarbons to accumulate below it so for example here we have less compact rock on this we have most hard rock and it is acting as a lid so in this rock we can see the storage of this hydrocarbons will happen okay so here if you see here how experts are using technology like they are using like tools methods techniques in the field of petroleum geology and they are going for axing of rocks okay so this is the thing and if you move on to this news page so there is nothing much important and leave this elections 2024 page so it is not at all useful for examination and this business page there is an article regarding wholesale price inflation i discussed this topic okay so in this world page also there is nothing much important in today's paper so these are the important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper and now i will show you like where can you get the notes of this class so this is our rathod's is classes telegram channel so do join this channel so that you can get the notes and the links of the classes and one more thing here is we are trying to provide analysis which is useful from your examination point of view if you really like the way that we are giving your current affairs so please do give the google review and i want your honest review and ratings so i will be giving the link of that google uh, rating okay google link google review link in the description box and even the comment section i will be pinning that so that it will be very easy for you okay to click and give the review so don't be like a lazy so please give the review for sure it is very very useful for us okay so that's it and if you really like this class hit the like button and please do subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy and this Rathod's IS Academy is also providing online course for your GS prelims come mains so if you want to take that you can contact us on this number 8074765513 and don't forget to give the review and rating okay so thank you so much for watching